Hey, welcome back. This is Sane. I'm probably just gonna do two more tutorials. So you're gonna have three tutorials for me today because it's all in this one map. Uh, today I'm gonna teach people how to do uh, basic button presses for skill games. So if you want to make a button press to do like a visor switch, like I have on my Metroid Prime maps, or like a, just a simple functionality to turn something on and off, or makes a certain animation happens, this is how you do it. So you're gonna pretty much grab any buttons. Now remember, on PlayStation 4, the buttons don't really translate from one position to another using buttons. Because cross-platform confuses that. So if you're on Xbox, or maybe PC, it may work on all platforms. I am not sure. Just to give you that tip, but sticks do work. Just to let you know, sticks do work. So... If my voice is too loud, just turn down the uh, the volume, right? So yeah. So pretty much what you do is you just grab a an event. When you start the game, you want these off. So as soon as you start the game, these will be turned on. But only turn on this one. Don't turn on this one. This is your off switch. So this is your on switch and this is your off switch. You do on press on press means it's on press on down means i think it's it's like almost like holding a sprint button when you're running in a video game and then on release is obviously on release when you release it so on down and on release plays a factor um we're on this video we're going to do on press so as soon as you press the button because this is an actual button not a stick okay so those are just users for sticks but you could i don't know how it works on the button i guess it just as, as you're holding the button down, okay, it will continue, or maybe just, I don't know, but I think it's when, you, uh, uh, when you're holding it down, it's, and, and then when it's on release, you could do it like that too. So almost like a toggle thing, but on press seems to be better because it's constant and you could just switch it on and off whenever you want. Just better. And then here... Um, what you gotta do here is you gotta do two state events. Every time you do on press, it turns off this button, and it turns off this button. You know why? Because it's gonna send another impulse to turn on the other button, and then turn on this button. Okay? And you know how basic intervals work, you just... Okay, so this is a constant, so as soon as you press the button, it turns this off, it turns this button on, and it does the command you want. And then now this all of this is off. Now oh no no all this is off and all of this is done what you want. But it now it doesn't work. Now when it comes to this button, the same thing's gonna happen. This is gonna be off. It's gonna turn the other one on, and then the variation's gonna turn off. Or whatever one you switch to if you're doing an animation transition. Like a running animation. And then when you turn it off, the running animation shuts off. And then you go to an idle animation again. I don't know, just something like that. Because in a, in a, in a real... If you wanted to make a game where the character runs, when you press this button, he's going to run. And then when you turn it off, it's going to go back to walking speed. You understand? So, it's just... That's how you change events. So for this one, I just change a variation. Size. And the same thing applies with this button. I make something visible, and then I turn it off to make it hidden, and invisible, and then hidden, and invisible, and then hidden. You understand? When you when you want to turn on on when you turn when you want to turn off all of these, you gotta readjust that and that, and then what you want to do is when you turn want to turn them on again, you always turn on the bottom one. So make sure your bottom is the on, and your top switch is the off. And this is the best way to make a button for a menu. If you want to start up a menu for a, a, a skill game in this game, all you have to do is program your buttons this way. If you want to program your sticks, it's a little bit harder with animations. But this is a video titled for buttons only, okay? Um... And, uh, I could show you another way of doing it. Hold on.
I'm actually going to load up another venue here. Okay. Gives you more of an, an example trait. Make sure when you test, you turn off extra buttons because you're going to use extra buttons. Okay, this is how you're going to test this stuff. So, this is a switch, okay? And it's going to be command by Y. When you go on, when you're on touching this box, you could turn the light on and off, on and off, on and off. This is on and this is off. This is on and this is off. But you can't press it again. It has to be only in this area trigger. Where you could do certain... So let's say if you wanted to uh, make a bridge animation, but only use that trigger to like orientate the bridge to make a puzzle or something, you could do that. Same thing with the combination lock. If I wanted to go to the combination lock and fiddle around with numbers and then come out of it again, you could do that too. So you see the combination lock, one, two, three, switch, one, two, three, four, switch one, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this is a very basic combination lock. You don't want, want to watch my five hour video on this. This it doesn't really work as consistently as it should. But you see it remembers the values, obviously. But then it doesn't remember. You see you see the glitch right here? That's that that's the problem. So but that's just another way of doing it. I'm gonna show you the script after, and then if you wanna pick up keys, there's actually an invisible zone here, which you could see here. And you go on top of it, you can press the button, but if you can't press it here, but when you go on top I hit the key, it's just a lot easier. In my old maps, you have to get on top of the key collision in order to pick it up. And that was a bit tedious, because you have to be in the exact position, so you have to be like right on top of it in order to pick up the key. Okay, for some reason that, that key is not working, because it's not sending a signal. Okay. So what you want to do here is it's a simple script again. Okay. Okay, so pretty much what's going to happen here is um, you're going to have two hit triggers. On leave turns off everything. On active turns on everything. But it has to be on active to that box. Okay. So when you're on active with that thing, it turns on everything. And when you're on leave, it uh, does nothing. So when you're on active, it's going to make this button turn. When, when you're on leave, it's going to turn off this button. When you're on active, it's going to turn on this button. You understand? And then there's another one here. When you're on leave, it's going to turn off both buttons. Make sure you do that or it's not going to because you can just do it afterwards. And then the button's the same way, the same way, off for off, off for off, on for on, and on for on. And all it is doing is changing the color of each light bulb and turning on each light source. You see, it's the same basic concept, but this one's a bit trickier because it's based on a trigger system. Okay, make sure your object instances, one, connect to the, the game character or the biker rider. Instance two is a thing. But the distance of the instance and types is types works for all types of that object. Instance is just that specific object. Okay. Now, if you have this, it'll work correctly. Now, the key functionality is the same basic concept again. On hit, on leave turns off both buttons. On hit, turns on only the pickup button. So this is your on and this is your off. Okay. All right. So you don't even need this. I don't know why this is here. Okay, if you think about it. So you just need this. And it works completely because this turns off this button 
and this turns on the button. Okay? On leave, and it's the same basic thing. Off for on, and then uh, it increases the value to the HUD by one. It turns off certain mechanics. It actually, when you pick up the key, it's going to turn off all this because you don't need it no more. Because you'll just be picking up keys randomly. And then what you can also do is, uh, what works too, for certain instances, is you could uh, turn off the collision of the, uh, of the object. So what you could do is get a variable data source. Uh, go to the advanced object, go to default, so remember 0, 1, 2, 3. So you want 0. Okay. And then pretty much what's going to happen is when you share an interval, right, which is, no, I mean, when you uh, grab a set value event, you could just set this to set. You can make this to three. So it's going to turn on the chest value, uh, I mean the sound source, and then make the key hidden because it, it mimics that you picked it up. We can also disable the object's collision. So even if these don't work somehow, you just made it work by changing the physics type. So remember when Shokan got stuck behind my door and I didn't know how to do this back then? I could have just turned off the physics type on the door and then Shokan can go through the door again. So that's another alternate way you could do a pickup and then you want to do the most complicated way possible. This is the combination lock on different variational numbers. And then I made, this is like a little combination lock trick, which doesn't work correctly. But I advise you, if you want to watch how I did this, you can watch the 5 hour t combination lock tutorial. It's not the best tutorial, it's not accurate. I wouldn't recommend watching it, but if you want a basic combination lock tutorial, uh, just skip to the end and uh, just follow the script. Yeah, but this is an overly complicated tutorial. I wouldn't recommend using it, okay? But again, the uh, same value applies to the... Uh, if you want to make a mega complicated animation, the same value applies to these triggers. You see, it's the same exact setup. And then you're on leave. Okay, so this video went from very easy to advanced. I'm really sorry. But if you want to get good, I'm sure that's just how it goes, right? Uh, I'm saying the legend, and I'll see you guys on a very useful tutorial, which is how to do uh, uh, 3D uh, skill game checkpoints with Portal. Alright, later guys.